Hey everybody, thanks for watching. We are in Long Beach with a fellow, what, do, what would you call yourself, a Long Beachian? Yeah, What's I guess it, Something like that. I've been here 30 years, so. Uh, Phil Reed, who is a author, a friend of mine, and the uh, biographer of Mike Austin with, uh, what was your, your book that you did about Mike Austin? In Search of the Greatest Golf Swing. Where Phil learned to go from like 85 mile an hour swing speed to sometimes 116 and was able to hit it over 300 yards many, many times after uh, learning the Mike Austin golf swing and working with uh, Mike and Jacob Bowden and some other guys. So th that's uh, originally why we had met. But in that book, I had read that you met a guy from Long Beach that was a really interesting character and kind of became a performance expert. Uh, tell me a little bit about who was Dr. Tom and uh, kind of his story. Yeah, so Dr. Tom Amberry was a retired podiatrist when I met him, mm -hmm. and he had just set the Guinness Book of World Records for making the most consecutive free throws, and it was 2,750 in a row. And I heard about him because he was on David Letterman okay. shooting during the David Letterman show. You say, oh, that guy's from Long Beach. Yeah, right, and right. I w at that time yeah. I wanted to write books about sports. Okay. And so I called him up. I actually wanted to write about golf, and I had contacted Fuzzy Zeller and a couple oh. of people, but, you know, right. no takers. Yeah. So I, I, um, I read about him, and I thought, I want to find out what he knows. <laughs> yeah. Because clearly he knows something, you know, really significant. So I called him up and we started shooting free throws together and, uh, you know, I s many times saw him make over 100 in a row. Yeah, wow. Know, which is pretty amazing. Hey, this cool device, uh, you guys will see in the video, shoot it and then it, the little like banana horn would, would put it right back to you. Yeah. What do you think would be equivalent to a free throw? Would it be, so, you know, given like, a, you know, fairly normal conditions, not like, yeah. you know, a, a, one of the famous Augusta five footers. Right. Would it be a four foot putt? Would it be a six foot putt? What I do you think, think it's four because, okay. I mean, you can pretty much bang a four footer into the hole. So this uh, is one and four. What I always right do here. is I take the putter plus the grip and that gives me about four feet. So imagine somebody making 2,764 footers in a row. Yeah. Um, which is, is insane. I mean, that would, that would, but it's do it, but it shows it's doable. I and mean, he it, was it, 73 when he did that. Yeah, it was just, uh, when he was retired, he was like, <laughs> he, said he said a funny line, he was just like, well, how many times can you water the garden? Yeah. And then he got into this. Right, right. So it's he, really. He had been a professional basketball player. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and a college basketball player. And he was tall. He knew the game really well. Uh -huh. But this was something he could still do. You know, because you're not going to run around and jump when you're 73, most people. But it wasn't too much into the uh, technicality of physically what he was doing, but he was really, really locked in on focus and concentration. Yeah. How would Dr. Tom tell you to have your mind in putting? Yeah, well, one of the first things he told me was he said, I'm hypnotized, but it's only for six seconds, which is about what it takes to bounce the ball three times, put your thumb in the groove, finger at the air hole, and then shoot. So that's six seconds. So he was in and out of what he called a state of self-hypnosis. It's almost like he wasn't doing it when he was shooting. Yeah. He was just being driven by it. Well, know. we all hear about muscle memory, but what's difficult is how do you let the muscle memory take over? Because the mind is always trying to jump in. Like if this was a four-foot putt for like an eagle, you'd say, this is a really important putt, so don't screw up and don't do all these other things, yeah. rather than just say, I've made a million, I'm gonna make this one the same way I make all my other four-footers. So I, I know that like when they talk about Tiger, uh, uh, and when he was putting like the, probably the best anybody's ever putted on tour, they would time him his routine and it would always be 16 seconds. Right. From like the time he was behind the ball to the time that actually the, the putter met the ball, uh, 16 seconds. It's like yeah. you could set your watch to it. And Dr. Tom, exactly six seconds. Yeah. You could, so how can, what's a good routine that you found for, for putting? Well, I, I think it's essential to start behind the ball. Okay. So no matter how short a putt, and you'll see most of the pros do this too, is, and then as you come around, you're converting that line into now a completely different state of, of vision. Yep. So, you know, then get your putter. I, and I think, you know, I read about this really early on, but I feel it's a good idea. Don't freeze, but like, it, you can either do a forward press or bounce your putter a couple of times. And then, you know, I think that following, the, following it to the hole, which is one of the, the keys for Phil Mickelson, is really important. Oh, actually watching the ball? No, uh, following, the, following. Pu the putter head. 
letting it continue. Oh, rather, toward, rather than cutting it off this yeah, way or, or up because that way. one of the things that happens when we're under stress is we get a different perception of time. Mm -hmm. And that's why the golf swing is, is so difficult. You're back here and it's like, I've got to get back to that ball. I'm going to do it quickly. Yeah. When really it should, you know, be a much more fluid motion. Mm -hmm. So here, you, the reason you follow through is to make sure that you're square when you hit it. So if, you're, if you follow through and you're still thinking about being square, it gives you a much better chance of being square here at that moment of contact. Yeah. So when, when they would talk about like focus, when Tom would talk about focus and concentration, right? like can there be like too much of a good thing like where you're, you feel like you're focusing but you're like burning all these calories, it's, it's like dripping sweat. In the sport of basketball, for example, you know, like Shaquille O'Neal, for him it's like being in a fight because yeah. he's under the boards, he's doing all this stuff. So he needs to make a transition from there to this rather delicate shot, yeah, right? Yeah. And how do you go and switch your mind? You know, it's like you're going to a whole different task. Yeah. And so that's why Dr. Tom, he would say, bounce the ball three times, focusing your, your eye on the inflation hole. Mm -hmm. Because the inflation hole is in every basketball, right? Yep. And then put your thumb in the groove, do everything exactly the same yep. way. And that certainly translates to golf. You have to be very ritualistic. Yep. So you would start and you would say, I'm starting my ritual now. And then you would just do exactly what you've done, you know, on the, on the practice screen. And what also is good about that is rather than you saying, this is an eagle putt, I got to make this, you're saying, okay, I'm doing my routine now. And you go through. So you focus yeah. on the process, not the result. Because if you do the, the process correctly, the result will take care of itself. Well, you know what I do sometimes? Like if yeah. I have like, let's say it's like a really long putt, mm -hmm. there's no way mechanically you're going to get it really close to the hole, right? Yeah. So I'll do a countdown. I'll go like, you know, seven, six, you know, five, step up to the ball, four, one last look at the hole, three, and then hit it on, on one. Oh, okay. And that way it keeps you from like freezing over the ball. Yeah, yeah. And it also, because there's a point at which like, you know, sort of analyzing it is not going to help. It's got to be all feel mm -hmm. for those long putts, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it kind of frees you up a little but bit. But you more. get really locked up in the process and not so much. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right, Tom, thank you. Uh, Tom, <laughs> Phil, thank That's you very much. That's a compliment. Much. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, Dr. Tom, did. Die. he died last year at 90, how old was he? He was 95, like uh, yeah, Austin. Like, just like Mike They Austin. met each other, too. It was really Oh, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, I remember in the book, Mike Austin uh, met you, and he's like, okay, writer, very cool. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but met Dr. Tom, he's like, you've done something good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's really cool. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, click the subscribe button. I'm going to do a vlog with Phil, too, at, uh, at one of our local courses. So you guys will want to see that. So click the subscribe button and also the post notifications button. Really appreciate you guys being with Be Better Golf. If you guys are basketball players and you're interested in how to make more free throws or you have a son or grandson or granddaughter or daughter that is into it, check out your book on, about free throws, which is called. The, the free throw book is called Free Throw, Seven Steps to Success at the Free Throw Line. And uh, we also have a short video that we created too. And we got the domain freethrow.com. Oh, very cool. Yeah.